Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at Wikibon.org headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts, inside the Cube, where we bring in guests, all the smartest people, and extract knowledge and share that with you. We're here today with Ash Ashutosh of Activio. He's the CEO. Welcome, Ash. Thank you, Dave. And uh, founder, former CTO. You are an alpha geek. You, you know that how the technology works. You've been a VC. Um, you've run a number of companies, uh, deal maker, uh, interesting combination, and uh, your, your latest baby is uh, a, a new company uh, based in Waltham, Massachusetts, Actifio. Tell us a little bit about uh, what Actifio does. Thanks, Dave. So uh, about three years ago, um, when we first put Actifio together, uh, it started out with a very simple premise where we saw that organizations and people spent about five times or even more on making and managing copies of data than the production data itself. And it was very, very interesting to see that uh, uh, you ended up with uh, you know, the, the tail becoming much bigger than the dog itself. And we looked at two big trends that helped us change that whole ratio. Uh, one was the virtualization or, or, or adoption of virtualization across the board. Second was the movement of data predominantly from disk to desk, as opposed to disk to other kinds of media. Taking those two, uh, we, try, we try to put together an economic model that said, is it possible for us to bring virtualization into data management? And that's what ActiveView is all about. Now, so uh, this week we announced a new class of storage called Protection and Availability Storage, which is purpose-built for optimizing management of copies of storage and sits alongside your production systems, completely independent of what's, what's happening on the production side itself. So in the last 10 years or so, we've just seen an explosion, not only of, of data, but in the copies of, of, of data. Absolutely. And that's certainly part of this, but there's, there's replication software, there's snapshot software, there's backup software, and these are all siloed point products largely. Now mm -hmm. some large companies have purchased smaller companies and mm -hmm. sort of creating this marketing umbrella, but from a customer perspective, I've got to manage these individual points. And so talk a little bit about um, why we have so many copies, and, and you mentioned you've got this sort of virtualization approach to managing data. Talk a little bit more about how how you're solving that problem, why we're there, and how you're solving that problem. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a it's an slight uh, twist to the old adage. We talk about the only constant in business is change. Uh, turns out um, there's a small twist to that. I think the only constant is a faster velocity of change. And so people and businesses have, have now a much better, much bigger requirement to go back and manage this change much more faster than they ever used to do before. And that requires a whole new way of how you craft your IT infrastructure, the whole new way of looking at how you run your operations. And virtualization absolutely becomes the foundation of making that happen. And the biggest barrier to that was the, ab the ability to come back and leverage information so that you can really run your business as fast as possible. And what happened in the process was you had your core set of data that was literally being copied for different kinds of reasons, sometimes for data protection, and therefore you had a separate tool for that. Sometimes because you want to run some business in analytics, a separate tool for that. Sometimes for disaster recovery, a separate tool for that. So all these tools were a result of the business requiring more and more information out of the data itself. And over time, you got to the point where you have a plethora of these tools. You've got a cackle of these things that you have to manage across the board. In fact, I think we talk about uh, the classic case of a hazing program for an IT organization mm -hmm. being a backup administrator. The, f the new guy comes in, you go do backup. It's a thankless job. Uh, it's one of those jobs when you never get credit for doing a great job, but you certainly get fired if you make one mistake. And so we decided to go back and address this underbelly of the storage industry, bring in virtualization, and bring in a notion of vir the consumerization of this whole thing so that you truly love to go back and manage these copies of data and bring about a new paradigm of how you can really make your business much more agile at a completely different price point. So we have uh, we have DAS, we have NAS, now we have we have PASS. We have PASS. Protection Availability Storage. So it's not just backup, right? Talk a little bit about, about the, the use cases. It's very simple. I think uh, when you make copy, it turns, turns out that uh, people make something like a backup software. Makes a copy every night, keeps it around for a few months. Something like Snapshot. Makes a copy every couple of hours, keeps it around for a few maybe days you have this very simple notion of how all these tools that are making copies of data follow a same set of fundamental data management primitives. They all copy, they store, they move, they restore. The only problem is they do them in individual silos. 
So if you can bring up a virtualization notion where you bring all those silos together with a single platform, virtualize all the disks underneath, not only have you optimized the underlying infrastructure, you also optimize the entire operational process. So now you come back and say you capture the data once, you reuse it many times, whether it is recovering a file from yesterday because you lost one, or because your test and dev organization requires 14 copies of the database from two weeks ago, or you want the disaster recovery from a compliance perspective, we test it so often. The notion of having a virtualized platform for keeping copies that can instantly recreate these copies, just like your storage system does when you're accessing a file. Think about pass as a storage system that accesses history. So you have a notion of time added to this entire set of data that's kept up there. And most importantly, that data is now managed optimally, both in terms of capacity and the network. So you get a huge financial impact from a CapEx, a completely different OpEx profile, but more importantly, what you do with the data, which is mo what most organizations want to come back and do, is just incredible in terms of the agility that it that brings about um, as a result of this virtualization. So as you write about the, you know, the hazing program for, uh, for IT professionals is data protection and uh, generally and backup specifically has always been one of the biggest pain points for, for IT professionals. And a lot of the organizations we work with in the Wikibon community have very limited backup choices. Mm -hmm. They'll maybe do a, a, a daily incremental and a, and a weekly full, and then for the mission critical applications, they might have some kind of replication software, and mm -hmm. that's it. It's mm -hmm. sort of a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. um, can you, can your system help break that, that mold? Uh, Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, I mean it's very interesting. We have one user about uh, almost nine months ago who had been delaying the purchase of one of those tools because he was waiting for the management to come back with the definition of what the RPO and RTO was gonna look like. Because based on that RPO and RTO, he was gonna select a tool. Mm -hmm. And what a, a complete refreshing change when we came back and said, here's a storage system that allows you to basically virtualize how we want to capture and how we want to restore. And you really don't worry about your RPOs and RTOs anymore. It, it reminds me of the, the pre-virtualization of the server days when you said, well, you know, I gotta run this application, I had to figure out which vendor I need to run this server on you don't think about it anymore. It doesn't take you three and a half weeks to bring up an application anymore. It takes you literally 20 seconds. You know, a click of a, of a VMware virtualized environment or a, or a virtualized server environment. And that's the same thing you're talking about here. You're not having the business go back and set a policy that, that drives down a choice of the product anymore. It's, it's, you're converting IT into a service where it's a platform that allows the business to go back and pick the, the appropriate knobs and completely optimize how infrastructure is managed underneath. Now to be clear, you're not pushing or selling the, the production capacity, right? You're selling the, the backup, the, the business continuity, the disaster recovery, the, all those copies, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the production capacity is gonna be what? It is any vendors. I mean, I think we're trying to very clearly isolate between two kinds of data in the organization. There's production data where your business runs. That's your golden copy of data. And then there's copies of this production data. And we are trying to optimize all these copies through a separate storage system. This production storage system could be all the favorite vendors you can pick your, your storage from, all, all of the, 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 the favorite vendors that you pick on a daily basis. The important part is today you have this choice of production storage vendor absolutely couple your choice of your, your copies. And we are trying to decouple how you manage your data from where you store it and have the SLA or your business requirements drive the class of storage and the kind of storage you want to use by having a data management engine that's virtualized. So your target can pretty much be, be any, any storage, any of the popular storage Our systems. target could be any of the storage vendors, any of the storage that's available, in fact, even a cloud storage, if you want to go back and use. The notion is your, your, the way you manage your data should be dictated by the application and the SLA. Your choice of storage should be completely yours based on this SLA and then it could be the favorite vendor you have, it could be some other new vendor, but you have a completely different way of thinking about how you go back and choose this kind of storage underneath. So one of the things you, you hear about, especially in backup land, you talked about disk to disk, deduplication was a huge trend, you know, still is, but you know, really took the world by storm and we all know the story of, of data domain and, and others. Um, you guys provide deduplication capabilities, correct? That's right. And, and um, and so there's a storage efficiency play there. You've got to do that if you're really replacing copies. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about um, 
what customers are doing with the software. Are they able to actually replace a lot of this replication software and, and backup software? Are they sort of running that in parallel? Or? Yeah, so there are two dimensions to, to optimization. One is within a bucket, make sure you optimize what's in the bucket itself. Then there's optimization of the fact that this unique set of stuff is across several of these buckets, several of these pipelines. And so we're taking a combination of, yep, we've got to go back and make sure we optimize within a bucket, but more importantly, collapse all these silos. So Actifio's virtu you know, virtual data pipeline is more about taking those individual silos, flipping them over, and creating a pipeline of how data lives through its life cycle. At the same time, you're having all the, the traditional uh, optimization way of deduplication, compression, and what we call dedupe async, a whole new class of replication that is just dramatically uh, an improvement over um, how data is replicated today. <coughs> so you have a lot of a lot of the traditional um, um, tools that are put into a pipeline, and you have people who come back and uh, start with a simple problem. It might be something as simple as, you know, I have a, about 12 terabytes of data, and it's taking me well more than 24 hours to back it up. And somebody suggests, maybe you, you know, switch to a, a backup to disk device. The reality is, the real dog of the problem is the backup software. The notion of copying data so that you can put it into a tape was the reason why you had backup software. And now you remove the tape with something that acts like a tape, <coughs> and maybe it's a little faster, but when you want to restore it, it's going back to the backup software. So you have, you have a little dumb device sitting there optimizing the capacity, but the intelligence lives in the backup itself. We are trying to come back and say, well, if you're moving from disk to disk, there's a much better opportunity to move the data in a raw format put it back in the raw format, and use a storage device to make it happen. And therefore, you can start with something as simple as, I want to solve the backup window problem. Uh, I want to do DR. Or maybe, you know, I just want to do business continuity. Or, in some of the larger organizations, we've seen people come back and said, well, I've got two petabytes of uh, SAP data, and it uh, turns out I only have 111 terabytes of production database, hmm. and 18 copies, two of them for backup and restore just in case and 16 of them because my developers want to copy. And that is, that's a scenario where we free up one and a half petabytes of storage because you have 111 terabytes of this production data and about 150, 160 terabytes of the copies, which are then virtualized to create these 18 copies anytime you want. It's a completely different way of looking at how you go back and use storage, but more importantly, how you manage the data when and where you need it. And it's not just uh, virtualization and capacity, it's also virtualizing where you want the data to be accessed, what format you want it to be accessed in, so that that old whole notion of uh, the intelligence in software and box being dumb, you combine all of that into a box that is much more smarter. It's an object-oriented file system that, that allows you to get the context of this of this data for the first time. So, <clears throat> so that brings me to my next question, which is you're absolutely right. There's this heterogeneous, <coughs> siloed mess out there of, of different point products and customers want nirvana, which is essentially this, this scenario that you're putting forth. How do they get from point A to point B, and, mm -hmm. and what do they have to do to adopt the, the, the product? I mean, you mentioned object-oriented file systems. Some, sometimes that scares people away. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about how a customer goes from where they are today to what you're proposing. Yeah, and the beauty of uh, um, Actifio, from a philosophy perspective, is to drive home the notion of simplicity. In fact, our tagline is radically simple. I mean, it's the notion that we want to make IT as simple as it can get and bring a notion of consumerization. So certainly we don't want our customers to start thinking about what's inside this box. We want them to think about the fact that it's a beautiful, beautiful controller that shows up, connects to the <coughs> power, connects to the network, and you set a discovery process of all the applications you have up there and assign SLAs. And that's all we want them to know. We want them to know two concepts, what apps they want to protect and what's the SLA they want to assign to this application. Now the question is, where do you start? And you have multiple entry points. You have the ability to come back and say, you know, I've been looking for a DR solution, and my vendor tells me I've got to buy another box of the exact same kind, some replication software, some van optimization, or I just bring in an Actifio controller on both sides, and it does take care of all this stuff. And by the way, it also happens to do backup. Ha also happens to do business continuity. Also happens to do you know, the, the, this is the power of virtualization. The things you can do when you take a function out of a sheet metal and make it into a file, you start making it do a lot more things. Or there are some situations, like I said, the, somebody wants to use a budget for this quarter because they have a terrible test and dev problem. It's taking them enormous amount of time to make copies of the data for the developers. 
you bring in an active PO controller, exactly the same thing. It captures it and then reuses it for whichever specific application you want to apply it to. It turns out you can reuse it for other things too, but those are all part of the, the entire platform itself. Mm. So <coughs> you mentioned uh, consumerization of, of IT, bringing that trend to, to your ethos, really. Uh, with something we've talked about here at Wikibon, Silicon Angle, and on the Cube uh, numerous times. Who do you think is doing a good job in the industry? Uh, do you think anybody is doing a good job of bringing that that Apple iPhone like consumerization mentality to enterprise products, or do you feel like you're one of the first? I think from a data management perspective, we clearly are the first. I mean, I was an investor before I started this project, and I looked at the landscape for a long time to look at where the pain points are and where the IT industry is. And I think in many cases, the the incumbents. Uh, absolutely have a have a desire to keep the complexity because that's part of the the entire uh, process and the business model itself but more importantly even if they had wonderful notions it is very hard to come back and take a clean approach to say I got 16 products in fact sometimes they may be from 16 companies and I'm gonna have to pull them together to do something I mean I worked in large companies where it's hard enough to get within an organization to get something done let alone across across an organization so I think there are a few companies you will see, especially early stage ones. Um, you know, some of the some of the notions that um, companies like Ecologic started off pretty early on. Uh, some of the stuff that XIV has done in terms mm -hmm. of user interface perspective. I think they were the first baby steps. I think we took a big giant leap in going back and addressing one of the biggest pain points, the largest footprint in terms of data, and one one that's considered an absolute underbelly that nobody wants to mention. So I think we're we are setting a tone in terms of bringing about this consumerization and virtualization, at least as far as the storage part of the IT industry is concerned. Let's talk about some of the basics of, uh, of Actifio, the, the company. So um, you were founded in 2008, is that correct? 2009. 2009, Nine, officially. Okay. <coughs> officially in 2009, you raised, uh, I believe, 24 million? Was that right? 24 million. And what's your headcount today? About 74 people now. And. Um, you're not going to tell me revenues, I presume. I mean, we're on the cube. If you want to, that's fine. But uh, maybe you could talk about um, customers. I mean, we're we talking, you know, a handful, dozens. We're just short of 100 customers. Uh, typical range has been users across all kinds of verticals, starting about 10 to 20 terabytes of data. So you're talking about mid-size, the lower end of the mid-range, to the enterprise class of customers, uh, and there's. I mean, the, the pain in terms of managing 10, 15 terabytes of data starts to become very palpable when you find that it takes two and a half weeks to recover your data. Or, the, or I'm, a, I'm a graphics artist in a marketing company, and it's going to take me, you know, it's taking me longer to get my old file that I accidentally deleted than for me to just recreate that entire file. That's when you know I've got to go back and change my IT. You know, your IT starts to become a bottleneck for business. That's when you bring virtualization. That's when you bring Actifio. So I wanted to um, shift gears a little bit and pick your brain. You've been in the business for a while now and very experienced entrepreneur and executive. Um, there's an interesting dynamic going on. And now you're very much tied to the virtualization trend and the disk-to-disk -disk trend is the other piece, but VMware specifically is owned by EMC, which is a very strange situation. I mean, it's almost somewhat unnatural. Um, and they're, they're a storage company, so uh, do you, how do you, as a small company, feel about sort of a, a large company like EMC and VMware and maybe some of these other large companies like a NetApp or uh, an IBM or an HP, sort of in that little collaboration, we've called it a, a cartel mm -hmm. even, you know, in quotes. Um, how does a small company you know, get access to, to SDKs and all the API knowledge that it needs to compete. H how do you do that? Well, I think we are living in a very, very wonderful world. I mean, you got the Arab Spring going on. I mean, there's democracy everywhere. Uh, the good part uh, is that as an IT and as a business owner, my ability to come back and drive my business has very little to do with who you are and what, what your size is. It's, is, it, is it about relevance to me? I mean, that's that's what every organization has come back with. And you've seen that. I mean, VMware was a two-person company at some point. Mm. But they weren't relevant. And so is Actifio. We started out as a you know, two-person company. And it's the question of, am I adding relevance to, the, to your business? Am I making sense to your business? Uh, there are some, some attributes to being big. Uh, but absolutely, I think you start seeing that um, as you get to the consumerization part, the notion of just 
sheer size uh, is not going to help out for too long. It's about innovation. It's about making making sure that um, uh, you're really able to make relevant sense for the business. And we've seen companies that were large. Uh, NCR was large, you know, one of the largest. Uh, so was AT&T. I guess all that's left is a brand. So I think mm. just the large size itself doesn't matter. If you're not relevant to the business, then it doesn't matter who you are, what size you are. But if you are relevant, we expect, we expect absolute uh, market success. Can large companies innovate? Some can in in pockets. Uh, majority, it's very hard. I think uh, majority have a foundation of a business model and a product set that they built on, which made them successful, which made them big. And I think I'm a big fan of uh, Clayton Christensen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of uh, you know innovators dilemma, um, and it's a problem most companies have a tough time getting out of. I mean, you're successful. Uh, you ride on a model that you think is is what's what's built the company, and it becomes harder and harder as you grow so large that you're you're unable to move. I mean, a lot of a lot of that answer depends on how you define innovation, I guess. Absolutely. And, and, and I think you know our definition would at least enca encapsulate massive disruption. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would certainly put, a, for instance, a data domain in, in that category. That <coughs> that feels like disruption to me. And I think, I think it's hard to actually come up with examples of large company yep. innovations as you know under that definition. Would Absolutely. You agree? Absolutely. I think you you said it right. I mean, innovation comes in various forms. I think one of the best examples of we just celebrated 100 years of IBM. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a company that has completely changed the business model. And they do tremendous amount of innovation, but not in the sense that we think of as a startup company. Uh, you see that across you know, companies like Dell, who go back and change the business models constantly. So I think for a larger company, the, the, the notion of innovation is probably relatively different from what a, what a smaller company thinks about in terms of product. Uh, but in general, uh, when when process becomes the foundation of your of your building your company, and the spark of innovation that comes from people becomes much smaller part of the entire picture, inevitably you just have to keep innovating the process, and nothing to do with the technology, nothing mm -hmm. to do with the product itself. All right, Ash. Well, thanks for coming on the Cube. Actifio clearly disruptive, um, doing a lot of innovation. A company to watch. Love to see the East Coast startup I innovation going on and. Uh, Appreciate you taking time out to, uh, to join us. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, check out more videos on siliconangle.tv and check out wikibon.org, siliconangle.com. If you've got questions, hopefully we've got answers. Thanks for watching.